Um, welcome everyone to another episode of Foodie Unpacked. I've got another special guest, actually our first goalkeeper um, on the show. Um, welcome, Mr. Jackson Tabelo Mabukwan. Uh, uh, <laughs> thanks, I'm glad to make it to the first 11. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute pleasure. And I mean, thank you very, very much for, for joining us, Jackson. We really appreciate your, your time spent with us. Um, I think let's maybe start um, as we always do and maybe just um, introduce us to Jackson. Where does Jackson come from? Um, and how was Jackson as a child growing up? Um, I, I, I see that you, you, you were born and, and bred in Pulukwan. Yeah, um, yeah. So firstly, thanks for having me. Uh, and uh, yeah, my name is Tabelo Jackson Mamo. I was born and raised in Pulukwani. Uh, in Hamatrala, that's where I lived. I went to primary school in Flagfontein, Hamatrala, you know, and uh, later relocated to Muleji, which is where I now stay. Uh, that's home. So, um, a Pulukwani boy, born and bred. And yeah, that's basically Jackson. And, and, and how, how was Jack, Jackson the child? I mean, growing up, um, what kind of child would you say you were um, in your early days? Well, I, I, I get told a lot of stories, you know, they say, some say I was naughty, some say I was very humble, some say I was shy, some say, you know, so, but I, I guess it's always been um, like any, any other young South African child growing up, um, you know, from humble beginnings and, uh, you know, there's always going to be different characters as a child at school. You know, I was one of those that are focused and, you know, when it's playtime, I was Obviously, extra, extra. So, <laughs> so I guess, yeah, um, I've just been there like any other normal child growing up, playing football and, you know, just going to school, yeah. Okay, no, awesome, awesome, Jackson. And then how did the love for soccer start? Um, is, it, is it something that you, obviously, with most of us, it starts at, up on the street. Um, how did the love for soccer start? Um, and then how did you try yeah. to into academy, so, academy football? Yeah, no, like any African child uh, growing up uh, as a boy, you know, we, we always played football. And uh, so that's what happened with me as well. Played football in the streets, uh, played football in my backyard at home with my older brother, Given. And uh, he would refuse to be a goalkeeper. So I would, you know, would make goalposts and he would take shots at me and... When I say, okay, now it's my turn, he doesn't want to. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, that's where it all began. And obviously playing at school as well during break. And eventually when we start to have uh, school tournaments and, and those kind of things. So it all started at primary school at a very, very young age. So, yeah, that, that's where it started. And, and, and so you're saying your, your brother used to, used to put you in goals. Is that where you started being a keeper? Did you start all the way from, from back when you were about seven, eight? Yeah, probably when I was six, five, six, seven. And yeah, but at that time, I was not really thinking about it because, uh, uh, you know, I would just play goalkeeper at times and sometimes they would force me to play goalkeeper because they all they didn't want to. And they, 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 I was obviously the best. And so... <laughs> They, they would always push me to be a goalkeeper. And um, and that's eventually what I ended up accepting. And I actually took it uh, serious from a very young age. I actually made a decision one time. I said to them, okay, guys, because sometimes when it was cold and it was raining and, you know, and I have to be goalkeeper, and, you know, I'd be like, no, guys, I'm not going to spend it there. And, you know, Lynch Chapek had short or my hands, no, you know, so, <laughs> but eventually one day I made a decision, I said to them, you know what, from now on, I will be your Andre Arendt, and I'm not, I'm never going to play in field, uh, if I try, if I ask, please don't let me, so <laughs> that's the decision I made, and yeah, uh, from then, I, I just never stopped. Interesting, no, no, very interesting that you started all, all the way then. Um, but I mean, when, how then do you, do you, do you make your transition to like academy soccer? Because um, I think on your profile it says you were at the School of Excellence and I know you were at Sundance as well. Yes, yes. So basically what happened after I completed my primary school, I went for trials. There was a School of Excellence in Le Bois home, um, just outside Pulukwani. So I um, went for trials there and I 
uh, made it uh, and went there at that School of Excellence for one year. And then while at that School of Excellence in, in Lima Home, we're ahead of uh, the trials uh, of the Transnet School of Excellence uh, in Jobek. Uh, so I also attended the trials and and yeah, I managed to, to, to succeed. Uh, I was the only one chosen out of thousands and thousands. And funny enough, uh, this story is one story that's very, very close to my heart. Um, I just had the trials. We all school holidays. I think it was around June holidays. And we had about trials on over the radio. And I told my mom, my late mom, and uh, told her about it to say, Mom, tomorrow there are trials in Ellis Ras. Please take me there. Then my mom did not even have a car. And uh, she said, No problem, my son will go. And uh, yeah, then we hiked and. Yeah, we somehow managed to get there about two after two hours, two hour distance from where I lived. And yeah, got there, thousands of kids. I was the only one selected. And then yeah, the following year, I think it was in 2001, that's when I joined the School of Excellence uh, in Esalen Park. Oh, okay, interesting. Oh, interesting. And, and it's, it's, a very, it's a very inspirational story, I think having to hike um on your way to to success yeah um yeah very different i think crazy crazy so yeah it's a yeah it's a very that that was for me the start because my mom did not even hesitate she just took me there and that was the beginning of everything for me because then the following year they had to send me off officially out of their hands to say <laughs> now you're going to Joburg. you're on your own and uh I remember after they left me, uh, the first two days I called and I was crying and I said, no, oh, I can't be alone here. Um, no, I want to go. I want to come back home. You know, I was crying, literally crying. And uh, they said, no, 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 relax. You're going to be fine. And eventually I made friends and I had the best time of my life. Uh, spent five years at the School of Excellence. And then, yeah, of course, from there, I then uh, was playing for the junior national team, under-17 national team. And um, there was a couple of teams that were interested in me when, when I completed the School of Excellence. And uh, at that time, I felt I was not sure about the offers that I was having and the teams that wanted me. And I decided I don't want to go away. And I, in actual fact, rejected off... Um, um, uh, PSL contracts and uh, NFD it was in Bale at the time. And I said, no, 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 no. Uh, these are not the right teams for me. I don't want to play for these teams. <laughs> and uh, my family couldn't believe it. They, they got so angry at me that, are you, are you out of your mind? You, you just uh, completed the School of Excellence and here professional teams looking to sign you so much money, but you are refusing just to sit at home. Okay, go back to school then. And I said, no, 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 the right offer is going to come. Just wait. So they couldn't understand. And at the time, I think we had just played the, um, the African Youth Championships. Uh, I think it was in Gambia. And I did so well that uh, there was also some couple of uh, uh, scouts from overseas that were inquiring. And so I knew that, um, you know, I need to wait for something uh, proper for me uh, uh, to make that uh, decision. So... <laughs> Eventually, I stayed home. After a couple of weeks, I get a call from Vets and uh, Coach Floyd Mohali, who knew me because we, he was coaching at uh, Kaiser Chiefs mm -hmm. with the youth. Mm -hmm. And while I was at the school of excellence, so we used to play each other in tournaments and the games. So Coach Floyd Mohali was now coaching the reserve sides at Vets. Mm -hmm. So he gives me a call. He says, Jackson, I hear you. You're at home and you refused, uh, I don't want to mention the names, so he, he refused uh, this big offer from this team and um, what's going on? Uh, don't you want to come play with us? Don't just sit at home, don't want to come play with us here and then I'll recommend you very soon to the first team. I said, no, yeah, don't worry, don't even promise, give me empty promises. I want to play for you, I will play for your reserve side. And then I joined VET, the reserve side, played there for two, three months. We played in the Bay Hill tournament. After playing the Bay Hill tournament, immediately I was invited to the first team. Uh, coach Bobby Solomon was the, was the coach, and uh, together with Eric Tindler. I was with the first team and started training for a couple of weeks. 
And uh, while training with the first team, they signed Monique Josephs. And then they sort of started forgetting about me. <laughs> so they were, they were excited uh, that there's this young boy and he did well at the Bay Hill tournament. And they brought me in at the first team and they were loving me and I was doing well. And then they make a big signing of Monique Josephs from IX Cape Town. And then all of a sudden, everyone forgot about me. And then I was just there, hanged around. It was pre-season, we are running, training is tough. I'm still a young boy. And, um, well, as I was there, that's when um, I got a call from my Melody Sandals. Uh, and my goalkeeper coach at the time in the national team, and the 17 national team was uh, coach Alex Heredia. He was a goalkeeper coach at Mamelodi Sundowns at the same time. So uh, at that time, you know, Pirates had just promoted uh, Senzo Meiwa, the late Senzo Meiwa, you know, may so rest in peace. And then Chiefs had just promoted Itu, Itu going to Melankune. So, so Sundowns said they also want a youngster, you know, who's... Uh, so, so that they invited me there and they were impressed. Within two days, they said, okay, we are signing you. And... Uh, Okay, so I told the people at Vets, I actually gave them a chance first. I said, guys, are you going to sign me or not? Mm -hmm. And they just said, oh, no, no, Jackson, we'll come back to you. Don't worry, just keep training. The following day, I made a 10. <laughs> and I went past uh, Bramfontein. I was living with my sister in Nechirena. Went past Bramfontein, went all the way to Zorkop and trained. Two days, they made a decision and they signed me. And yeah, the rest is history. That's when I turned professional. That was in 2009. 2005, 2006, and um, yeah, I was 18. That's when I signed my first professional contract. Sure, it's quite, it's quite a journey. It sounds like quite a journey, and um, yeah, crazy, crazy times. Yo, it's been it's been all up and down, down for you, I think. Um, but I, I, I seem to, I seem to, to, to remember. I think your your time at Vitz. Um, I think I, I, I remember when you played in that team. Um, yeah, yeah, Floyd. Um, yeah. A very, very good team, a very, 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 very good team and uh, with a good coach as well. So that was one of the teams that um, gave everybody problems. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. And, and, and maybe, maybe before we move on to your, to your professional experience, maybe um, take us through some of your, your, your most memorable or, or most uh, memorable times as a as a developing goalkeeper. So maybe something that that has always stuck in your mind, a memory that's always stuck in your mind, be it from School of Excellence or from Vets, um, or even from the national teams, um, the, the national teams, the uh, under seventeen national teams. Yeah, uh, oof, there's quite a lot. There's uh, honestly there's so much, so so much more that I can share with you. Uh, the School of Excellence has just been amazing. That's the best time of my life that I had because I was just a young boy. It all started with tears and, you know, living in the School of Excellence here. I was a national asset playing for the national team and uh, with offers from PSL clubs. And, you know, I grew and learned so much. It's just unbelievable. Each, each and every day, they was just, uh, yeah. But um, some of the most memorable moments were when we went to Gambia and played um, in a peace tournament. They uh, were invited by the president of the Gambia. And I was, it was my first time flying out and, uh, you know, so nervous. And we had a, yeah, I had a great tournament there. And, um, also just, 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 as a youngster, just traveling around, you know, I've been all over Africa. I've been blessed to, to really, from Lesotho to all the way to Gambia, Senegal. And, you know, as a youngster, you know, all those memories are just, uh, when you try and think of them, you just uh, consider yourself uh, very, very blessed. So, yeah, there's so much, 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 so much, much more to share. Uh, the time with the under-20s national team and... Um, with Coach Serami winning the um, Kosafa tournaments, you know, and captaining under 17 national team, captaining under 20 national team, and uh, going to, I think I was still in the under 20, and uh, Coach Steve Compella called me. We had the uh, Africa Youth Championships in Algeria. You know, that was some, a big, 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 big experience for me. You know, I was a youngster, I was quite younger than the guys that were, were in the under-23s, you know, there was the Tsepo Masilelas and 
Ena Parker, uh, Vincent Kobola, Mkanise Lisiwasha, uh, Richard Ranchi. Um, you, it was a uh, Bongani Kumalo. We had a, oh, I can't remember my phone was, but yeah, we, we had a very, very, very good team with Coach Steve Compella, you know, African Youth Championships, all sporting coats there. We were there with the swimming guys and the Banyana Banyana ladies, you know, some of them I know them from way back, <laughs> back in those, in those times. It's, it's unbelievable. And I was sure she's now a coach, oh, yeah. you know, whenever we, we, we meet, we we share those those moments and we just had a good laugh and yeah but uh yeah so much so much 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 more to yeah. share and uh yeah. just been i've just been blessed to actually go through the proper channels uh because it's not everybody that they get that opportunity to play from junior and national teams i think the only player we can actually refer to up to today is kamahelo mokojo who actually started at the under 12s that known under 12s and there's no one else, you know. So I was so very, very much fortunate to start from under 17 and uh, go through all of all the stages all the way through to Bafana Bafana and even being captain of Bafana Bafana. It was just a, a blessing for, for me. So, you know, yeah, my, my youth uh, journey has been a long one, but a very, very prosperous one. Makes sense, makes sense. And, and, and it, it, it really has been a great journey, it sounds. Um, so now you get to, obviously you get to Sundowns and I mean, Sundowns is a relatively big team. Um, you, you then find, um, obviously, more established goalkeepers at the time. Um, but how was, how was your reception as a youngster um, in the Sundowns team? Um, were you well received? Were you treated as a little brother? How did it go? Wow. Well, my, my time there, I just remember my, one of my first two sessions when I arrived there. And I just uh, surprised Muriri Swedes so just uh, forever. They just still stuck in my head up until today. You know, he <laughs> he, he just called me to the side. He says, "Not, you know, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. What's what's up?" <laughs> it's like, ah, "Well, I'm not, you sure?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, sure." So they don't care, my boy. No, don't worry. If I'm not, it's my boy. He say it, and that was just like the 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 introduction and I couldn't believe it. I was like, okay, this guy is, is the superstar. He's one of the big mm. big players in the county and he's, he's a big player at Sundowns and he's just welcoming me. So you know, I was nervous at first, but he was like, you know what boy, let's go. Let's show them. And um, obviously I was the youngest, I was 18. I think the the the, the other okay my the other young stars in the team before I arrived were Buyo Mere and um, the Rato Shabangu and uh, Robin Johannes. Uh, actually, the Rato Shabangu and Robin Johannes were the youngest. Uh, they just been signed, I think, from tax. And uh, so those were the young stars of the team. I think they were 20, 21. And, and, and there I came as an 18-year-old, and I'm a goalkeeper. You know, but I was so well-received. And, um, yeah, the guys loved me. Benson Thongo, you know, the late was kind of high, you know, surprise. You know, Voyo, Shabangu, they, the oh God, Fisapula, they, you know, Ezra, they, 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 they took me as, as like their, their little brother. They just uh, welcomed me so well, and, and that made me really um, just relax. And uh, obviously, at first, I saw them as superstars, and they were those ones who were a little bit harsh and they didn't care you, and they, and they made you stronger. And uh, you know, the likes of Dylan Shepard, he was always on my case shouting at me and, and, and at first I would, I would be scared and then one day Brian said, no, 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 Jackson, you are the one who's supposed to be shouting at Dylan Shepard. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to shout at Dylan Shepard. And uh, eventually, yeah, I got used to it and uh, started giving them some back and started learning how to communicate because I watched how you know, Brian Murray was doing his things and how he was communicating with the guys and you know, the respect he had from them from the teammates and, uh, and everybody at the club. And uh, then, yeah, eventually I started understanding and I learned so much. You know, the guys would always advise me that learn, 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 learn as much as you can and, and don't compete. Don't think about competing, learn. And, and that's what I did. I said, you know what, I'm just going to learn from these guys and, you know, I'm going to make sure that I speak to them and I go to the coaches and I speak to the goalkeeper coach and I go to Brian and I go to Calvin Marlin and that's what I did and uh, you know once you've got the lessons once you've got um, the knowledge 
and uh, it's power because then you've got that for the rest of your life um, and that's exactly what, what helped me to to really kickstart my career because I took my time and I learned as much as I could and the moment I felt like um, I was ready uh, to play and to compete and obviously I started realizing that okay maybe here it's not gonna happen because at the time Sundance was struggling you know we we're not winning trophies you know we of course there's a couple of trophies that I won with the club that we won but we were not dominating we we're not just dominant as Sundance is at the moment you know what I'm saying so uh, it was a difficult period some moments to introduce youngsters into the team, especially in a crucial position like a goalkeeping department. So uh, then after a couple of years, I think I spent five years at Sundowns and I then said, oh, I'm ready to play. I want to play, I want to compete. And I asked for a loan. And then uh, at first they refused and I asked and they refused. And eventually they ended up allowing me to go on loan and I went to Platinum Stars. And and, and is that where is that where you started to gain prominence as a keeper and started to play a bit more? Um, I know it was a, it must have been a long five years stay if you if you weren't obviously playing. Um, so is that is Platinum Stars where it all started to blossom for you? Yes, absolutely. Uh, that's where it all started because I just wanted to, to prove a point as well to myself uh, to say I'm ready. You know, I'm ready to play. I'm ready to to compete. I'm now ready for this level. Uh, of competition because there was reserve leagues at the time and I was playing those kind of uh, matches and it was never enough for me and I was playing friendly games as well obviously but I always started uh, having that uh, that feeling that I'm ready to play now I'm ready for the big league and uh, at the time I had just played I think two matches uh, for Sundowns uh, at the one match I think we we had a the league was already won but we had a Net Bank Cup final uh, the following week. So it was more like resting some of the players. So it was uh, more like giving me a run and um, and they put me, threw me in and I, I played and uh, I played two matches. I think my first match was against uh, Platinum Stars away at Platinum and I was actually man of the match. You know, my first official PSL match uh, was against Platinum Stars. Uh, the goalkeeper's uh, Brian had an injury. Calvin was also forced this one to the injury. Let's give you a chance. And they just gave me a run in the match. And I did very, very well. Kept a clean sheet. And then we won. And I was man of the match. So, um, uh, obviously, then uh, I expected to be gradually uh, uh, introduced into the, into the first team and start playing a little bit more and you know, start getting, but unfortunately, um, with the coaches, so many ch uh, co uh, changing, uh, changing coaches, in coaches, it uh, just didn't allow for me to get that opportunity because you could, you could imagine they were signing superstars. Um, I remember <laughs> I always share the story with my friends. I say, you know what, you think uh, competition is, uh, you know, you are busy talking about competition. There was one time at Sundowns, I'm telling the youngsters, I'm like, there was one time at Sundowns we had 10 strikers, 10, <laughs> and superstars. And they didn't believe I'm like, hmm, 10. I'm like, 10. <laughs> he said, ah, oh, yeah, you are like, I mentioned, I said, they were slowly signing there. Like, at the same time, we had my mom and at the, at the same time, we had Surprise Moriri. At the same time, we had Torel by the same time. Sapula at the same time we had Sovilagas at the same time we had Swisso Zuma at the same time we had uh, Collins in the Zoom. They, they were like, huh? I said, all those people all at once. Oh, I, I, <laughs> and, and the, uh, your strikers. And, uh, but you can imagine. So obviously the coaches are expected to deliver. They're expected to, you know, to get the results. And, and here you are, you're a young goalkeeper. Do you think uh, a new coach coming in is signed from all the way from Spain and from wherever and he arrives, do you think he's not really going to be coming here and risking his job playing mm -hmm. a youngster? Because the fans are going to be questioning him, are you out of your mind? You know, mm -hmm. who's, this, who's this youngster? They don't even know their own youngster. When you come here, you want to put him in, you know. Uh, so it was always going to be difficult for me to get an opportunity. So I started realizing that, okay, fine, coaches were changed almost every season, half a season. And... Um, and then I said, okay, no, 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 for my development, because my development, I started realizing that obviously now it's starting to stop because I'm no longer competing or playing competitive football. 
so I need to to move. I need to make a move, and and obviously, uh, so that I can continue with my development. And uh, that's obviously when I asked to leave. Uh, it wasn't frustrating at all. The five years I spent there, like I said, was 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 also a great time because I learned so much. And uh, of course, still away with the club, we won the league. We won the MTN8, we won the Netbank Cup. Mm. You know, those are obviously as a youngster, that winning feeling, that winning mentality and being there with the superstars and being able to see on and off the field, you know, how to do things, how to take care of yourself, how to, you know, it was just a, a perfect platform for me to learn everything. And I mean, co best coaches from the likes of Risto Stoichkov and uh, Gordon Ederson, you know, Ted Dimitru, so, so you can imagine. So, and obviously with the, with the right attitude that I had uh, of, of wanting to learn, it all benefited me because, you know, I learned a lot from, you know, the goalkeeper coaches, the, goal, the, the, the coaches themselves, the players, and the, the other goalkeepers. So, so yeah, it was just a, a learning curve for me and uh, the best because obviously from learning tactically uh, and technically from the School of Excellence, I started learning uh, tactics and, uh, and and obviously life itself uh, when I had at Sundance. Mm. So where where did you where would you say you enjoyed um, your football the most? Because you then spent some time, I think, at, at Aces, at Platinum Stars. Um, you went on to Pirates um, before before obviously moving on to Celtics. So where would you say you enjoyed your time the most? Um, yeah, no, I guess. Um, it's a very difficult uh, question to answer for me because um, all the clubs that I played for uh, all had different benefits to my uh, career, you know. And uh, as I mentioned, with Sundowns was more development and with uh, Platinum Stars was more introduction for me. And obviously a hiccup at Vets where I struggled with injuries. Aces, that's where I, I guess I played more. Uh, so um, that's where I got more game time and where I really uh, introduced myself fully to South African football and started obviously being uh, recognized and also got the national team call up and, and the senior national team call up. So, so I think um, all 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 the teams that I've played for, uh, they all got different um, memories and, and and I can't really mention one because also at Orlando Pirates uh, it was a dream come true to to play for. For a team like Orlando Pirates, you know, to play for the Soweto Derby, a childhood dream, and then and, and now at uh, at Celtic, obviously now also saying, okay, now let me go and uh, make sure I make a, a huge comeback and and, and show those that uh, doubt or those that really don't really fully know me, uh, show them exactly what I'm capable of, and uh, there's still a long way to go because I'm young. So to say exactly where I enjoyed fully, fully, fully my stay. Uh, so I think all of the teams that I've been with, I've enjoyed myself a lot. No, I, I'll tell you what, I, where I enjoyed you the most, um, and, and this is before Celtics, I think I, I, I liked watching you at, at, at Aces. Um, I think you, 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 must, you showed some of your, your best performances in that period. Thing. But um, let's talk maybe a little bit about Pirates. Um, um, you spoke a little bit about it being a dream come true. Um, um, how, how was it, um, your, your time spent there? And, and maybe take us through... Um, the emotions and, and the feeling of walking into a club knowing that you're going to play? Uh, yeah, at Pirates was uh, a great time. I spent three years there and uh, as I mentioned, it was a dream come true. Firstly, to to get that opportunity and I'm still grateful and I still also today want to say thanks to the chairman and the, you know the, the technical team at Pirates for giving me the opportunity to represent the club. And uh, yeah, of course, um, great, great, great memories uh, playing for a big club. Week in, week out, you, you there, relevant, and people want to watch you, and people want to see how well you do, and people are going to talk about you every single day. And uh, you know, it's, it's got its own pressure, but uh, it's what you want. You want to actually be there, be in everybody's face and, 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 and say, here I am, here's my talent, you know, see me, judge me and love me. And, you know, so, so that's basically what it has been. Uh, and uh, on the downside, it's just uh, we did not really uh, achieve uh, the time that I was there. We did not uh, win, 
you know, trophies. That's the only thing. The uh, only disappointment is my stay there. But other than that, I enjoyed every moment. I played, uh, represented the club, just being part of the club, on and off the field, representing the team, supporters, and the relationships, and um, personally playing for the club, representing it, and playing it also in the Soweto Derby, you know, semi final, helping the team to play in the final. You know, that was. Um, a dream come true for me. You know. yeah. That makes sense, makes sense. And, and, and you did all right. So I just want to talk about maybe um, just the, the psyche that goes behind playing for, for a team like Pirates because and you guys have got the most unfortunate position because um, um, if anything happens, they blame the goalkeeper. That, that's always the case. Um, so how do, you, how do you bring yourself up from, from a situation maybe where um, um, there, there was a an incident on the field and, and, and maybe a goal was conceded or, or maybe you just didn't have a good game for whatever reason. Um, how does Jackson psych himself up to, to bring himself to, to stay positive? I think, especially with goalkeeping, it's a confidence position. You need to be confident in order to, to, to display good, good, good displays. Yeah. So how, how does Jackson keep himself positive? Uh, firstly, the one thing that people don't know and don't understand is that Jackson plays football every single day of his life. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Jackson makes mistakes almost every single day of his life. And he doesn't have great sessions, training sessions, every single day of his life. So you have to understand that I'm, I, I'm, before you see me on the pitch, yeah. I've already had many mistakes that I've been making at training on certain days and, and life continued. And I was still able to come back the next day and train well. And, and, and those, those are the, the things that people don't know and don't understand, but it also goes uh, with experience. The, the older you get and the more experience you start having in the game, then you start knowing how to deal with it because it, it's not about your perspective about me. It's not about what you say, what you think about me. Because what you think about me is only determined by the 90 minutes on the day uh, because maybe someone had a couple of you know, a couple of drinks and he's just uh, all vocal and he's just, he's just emotional. Mm. And uh, because today I didn't play well and today we did not. And then you just say anything that you want to say. And next week uh, the coaches decide, no, we, we know his qualities uh, and then they, they keep me in and um, I help the team win the match and men of the match. You know, you, you vote for me. You say, yeah, he's the man of the match. Yeah, he's one. And then you start comparing me with so and so from that team and and then you yeah, and then you boast about me, and then you praise me, and then you inbox me on, on my on my socials, and you post my photos, and, and you are excited. And that's the nice thing about football. That's that's what we love. That's why we are playing the sport. And obviously, the older you get, then you start understanding and start developing what we call you know the, the emotional intelligence because you need to understand that it's emotions attached. It's not so much reality because. You know, people can praise you today. Next week, they think you are useless. Yeah. So, so you need to understand, especially when playing a crucial position like a goalkeeper. So, so it comes up with age and uh, with maturity as well, and as well being at a big club like that, where where you are now judged every single game that you play. Um, and that's that's what I learned uh, a lot when I arrived at Pirates. Um, that obviously every single thing that you do. Uh, you know, people are going to say have something to say about it, whether good, whether bad. Uh, you're always gonna have people commenting on whatever you do, and sometimes, um, and I always, uh, I have always said this, but it's, uh, it's it's something that people don't really know that uh, if I am from Polukwani, uh, you know, the football politics that are there, that uh, petty people or people from my hometown are always gonna have a soft spot for me, and are always gonna try and defend me. Oh, that's my homeboy. And you need to understand that sometimes it's not um, it's not the real thing. It's not reality. He's he's just loving me because I'm I'm his homeboy, and he feels I must be in the starting eleven because you know he wants to boast about me. But maybe at the time I'm not doing well, or maybe at the time the other goalkeeper should be in the starting eleven. So that's what happens, and those are the politics that go that goes behind. And people don't know about those things uh, because uh, people can love a certain person or a certain goalkeeper while the other two are better than him. But people want the other one to play. You know, that's what people want because they like him more. They just love him more. You know, those, but, uh, you know, when you are there, you start learning a lot of, uh, you know, 
a lot about football and that's why I'm saying that obviously when you are there uh, when you are a little bit older a little bit more matured you're then able to to learn um, how to handle all the pressure and all the politics and and, and all of that you know oh, fair enough fair enough and, and just uh, maybe just quickly um, to to leverage off that question so so obviously it, it comes with emotional intelligence and it makes sense and 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 it's something that you grow with experience but um, is, it, is it something that perhaps the, the club, do you think, and, and this is just your opinion, um, do you think also the club should do a bit of work around um, maybe bringing people in that can help players with, best, with emotional intelligence? Do they do enough? Um, is, that, is that something that you must do maybe personally as a, as a player? Um, what is your take on it? Should the club involve, get involved or should yourself as a player, is it something that you must do for yourself? Um, you see, you see, when I was um, starting and I was talking about sundowns and I mentioned how well I was received and I mentioned so many players mm. and I, I, could, I, I literally couldn't stop going on and on and I could, I could still continue. Even now I can still mention many other names that are there that helped me settle as a young boy and that helped me learn and, and, and grow and, you know, all those experience guys. So that's what you need. And, and, and for me right now, I'm at a stage where I'm now an experienced player. You know, I've been in the game now for long. And now I have that responsibility to do exactly what uh, Surprise Moriri and Benson Thromo did uh, for me back then when I was still a, a youngster. So, so I have that responsibility. And that's what, exactly what we do. You know, as senior players, you have to make sure that you take care of the dressing room. You take care of the players. You advise the youngsters. You, you, you control their emotions. You know, you help them. And, and, and that, that's what it is. Everywhere in the world, football, you look at um, leaders, uh, 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 there are those that are born leaders and there are those that uh, leaders that are made. And so, so you, need to, you need to make sure that you help others to also groom other leaders so that the responsibility is not just only on your shoulders. And you don't have to be a club captain to, to do that. And you don't have to put responsibility on the office or on the boss, club boss and whatever, or say no, bring a psychologist, uh, how to deal with people, how to deal with supporters that are like this. No, there's basic things that you can try and uh, assist players on, like your finances and your, you know, your social medias and, and those kind of things. But football is an emotional sport. And when I'm on the pitch, you can never tell me exactly how or teach me exactly how I'm going to behave or how I must react. If you go on my teammate and you punch him in the face, my in, in my immediate reaction is going to be, I'm going to run at you and probably sharp you, or, you know what I'm saying? And I could probably start, end up getting a red card. And then you say, well, but you don't, don't you teach these players emotional intelligence? Why did he go ahead and retaliate? It's an emotional game. It's an emotional sport. You know what I'm saying? And that's the beauty of, of sports because then you, are, you can't really, you don't know what you expect. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, that's what it is. But of course, um, I, I believe that this is for us as senior players, especially to assist uh, where we can uh, with the experience that we've got uh, to help uh, the youngsters and to help the other players uh, how to deal with certain situations in the game. And sometimes you need to be able to read the moments, see the situations that, you know, what this player, the supporters are getting on his back and they are booing him. And he might probably, when he's going out, give them a middle finger start you know throwing hands at them and what so you need in the match try and man, you know manage the, the teammate and try and encourage him try and help him so that so that's what you need to do um just uh, be that leader on the pitch and be able to help your your teammates yeah so i i i agree with you and i i like i like i like the way you answered that because um i think each one should teach one obviously um and and also i think also i mean it, it, it's time we stop making excuses for people and people must work on their own personal development, um, which is also, which is also, I think, something that you're encouraging. So I think, I think for me, it makes, it makes all the sense in the world and each one should teach one. Um, so let's talk about your, your current club. Let's talk about your current club. I think um, for me, I've enjoyed watching Celtics. I really have enjoyed watching Celtics play of, of recent. Um, you guys seem like you guys are clicking. Um, and you guys are doing the right things, and it, 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 it's just looking really nice to on on as a product. Um, how how have you enjoyed your stay? I think I think you spoke a little bit about yourself being now obviously a senior player. 
Um, how have you enjoyed your stay at Celtics and, and how have you taken to this new role of, of, of being a senior player? Well, it's not necessarily a new role, but how have you taken to the role of being a senior player um, and, and a captain even without the, the arm belt sometimes? Yeah, no, firstly, um, at Celtics, I've uh, received a great welcome, you know, from the supporters and everyone at the club. And of course, also, I'm also grateful for the opportunity because it also gives me uh, a new platform to 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 really express my my you know my talent and to serve and um, yes rightfully so um, uh, now as as a senior player and then I have that responsibility to to help and assist and I'm just excited um, about that because um, uh, like I mentioned I don't know whether I was born a leader or um, um, I was helped into becoming one. But I've been captain from a young age, you know, in the under-17 national team, under-20, Bafana Bafana, captain. So, and, and many other teams that I've played for have been captain as well. And so, so that's what I'm saying, that um, uh, this is, it is what uh, is just exciting for me to be able to come here and be able to contribute. I'm just here to help. And uh, at the same time, I believe there's still a lot, lots and lots of football uh, still in me uh, for for the country to see and for me to serve the country as well, and uh, you know yeah, so I'm just excited. I'm just happy for this new chapter, and I look forward to obviously doing even more for the club and for the country going forward, and uh, for my fans as well because uh, I believe the, there's still a lot more to come for me. No, no, true, and I I, I agree with you fully with with regards to that. Um, but I, I, let's just maybe talk about it. Um, obviously, it was it was widely spread in the papers that um, Celtics were, were going through a bit of a financial situation, um, and, and which is not unheard for because I mean football is an expensive uh, business. Um, but how how do you guys manage to in 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 these financial situations and, and maybe not the best um, financial situation the club finds itself? How do you guys manage as a collective, as a group collective, as a team? to stay positive and to keep pushing the results because I'll tell you one thing, um, as supporters, we're reading in the papers that Celtics is having financial trouble, but we're not seeing it on the pitch, um, which is crazy. Uh, my honest answer is uh, I've also read about that. I was still at Pirates when I heard about the financial problems uh, ever since I arrived at Celtic. Uh, my payments are up to date and I haven't had one player complaining about unpaid salaries and, and things like that. So uh, those are the issues of last season. I was not here, so I cannot comment on things that I know nothing about. So, mm -hmm. But of course, we are here and we are working and we are excited uh, to work for our, our supporters and for the club. And which is why you can see you can see it on the pitch that the, the boys are happy. And, and, and like I said, mine... Uh, being one of the few that obviously now just joined. Uh, I'm just happy to to add to what the team already had. And, uh, you know, it's exciting. Uh, there's still a lot more to come from this team. Uh, unbelievable talent. And, uh, yeah, I'm hoping we can uh, obviously uh, build on, on the performances that we've had so far, work uh, as hard as we've been and be able to achieve more because um, I think we stand a good chance of um, of doing even better than uh, what the people have seen so far. No, definitely. And I think, I think, I think um, also, also just, just on, on um, at Celtic and your, and your, and your, your time there, um, would you find that you, you, and I know every coach that you play for will be different. Um, but would you would you find that playing under a coach that has played the game at a high level um, is is different to a coach that perhaps didn't play at the highest level but um, went straight into coaching? Um, do you is the difference obvious? Yeah, it's very difficult for me to compare coaches. I I actually I'm one that never wants to to get into that space because it um, <clears throat> it restricts you from learning because uh, when you look one and you think okay I prefer coaches that have actually uh, um, played the game before you know the the with my experience uh, I've seen I understand them better then it it, it restricts you because uh, going forward when you're gonna be with somebody that is like it's, it's like um, 
in, in school, in class, when you say, I hate maths. So whenever it's, the, it's, it's a maths class, you, you obviously already the attitude is negative. So, so I, 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 I can't really say, um, you know, who I prefer, a coach that has played the game uh, before, because, you know, say Alex Ferguson has not been known as, you know, uh, the coach that, uh, the ex-player that has played and won what what with Scottish or wherever he comes from, and and <laughs> so 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 so, but he's one of the greatest uh, football managers mm-hmm. in the whole world in history of football, and uh, so so. For me, it doesn't really matter as long as you you know you uh, you got your man management proper and you got your tactics spot on, and you will get the respect and you'll get the results and you'll be. I mean, tactics are different. Some prefer winning in a certain way, playing in a certain way, and some in another way. And you need to adjust. And I've been able to work with so many different coaches, from as I mentioned, you know, international coaches, Aristo Stoichkov, to working under coaches like Kevin Hunt. Coach Mushi Netigral, Steve Compella, the list is endless. Sarame Litswaka, great coaches, top, top, top coaches too. Also younger coaches like and uh, this one the CMS. So so it's 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 all about being able to adjust and being able to to give that respect to young or old, local or international, you know, high, high, high flying scope and donor what what football or carpet football. Whatever, how, however you say you you say it, or however the supporters say it, you know, classic uh, flavor football, or you know, um, so 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 you need to be able to adjust, and you need to be able to respect, uh, you know, the the way the coach wants to play, and you must be able to to support it because <laughs> you you cannot sabotage the plan of the coach and say no, 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 no I, we don't like playing this, no, I don't like it's not about me, it's about um, you know the. The club, and 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 then obviously you need to make sure that you, as a leader, you, you support the coach uh, all the way, whoever, whichever. No, definitely, I, I I hear you, I hear you. And let's maybe talk about the future for Jackson. Um, um, I think you you, especially for a goalkeeper, you're still very very young. Um, uh, what is the future? Do you still look at the uh, that Bafana door and say I, I still want to go into that door? Um, have you have you do you have a plan in mind for 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 your next maybe five six seven years? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I still want to 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 play for a fun of a fun. I believe I'm go, I'm still gonna play for a fun of a fun and contribute and play much much more for many years uh, for my fun I'm, I'm working hard and I know my hard work uh, today is not for tomorrow but it's for years to come you know that's the attitude that I've always been uh, having as a youngster because as I mentioned you wouldn't sit five years at at sundowns if you were just planning for playing over the weekend you can imagine Monday to Friday and you're working so hard saying I want to play this weekend I want to make sure the coach plays me this weekend imagine how many disappointments I would have had if from my first day, I had an attitude of saying, Monday, I'm working so hard to play on Saturday. And Saturday comes, I don't play. Next week, I do the same thing. Mm-hmm. For the whole five years, imagine where I would be. I would have probably given up on football a long time ago. Who's got such, such patience? But you need to plan your life and you need to be realistic about your situations and where you are and what you want to achieve. And yeah, I'm at the peak of my career and um, struggled a little bit with injuries. Now, when I started with uh, Celtic right now, um, but I'm, you know, fit again, and I'm just looking forward to finishing the season strong, and make sure that I knock again on the door, and uh, I'm quite positive it's gonna be open. So the plans for the future, I still want to play overseas. It's been one of my childhood dreams, and I believe I'm gonna achieve it as well. Um, now that so those are my short-term goals. I want to get back into Bafana Bafana, and I want to play overseas in the next two three years. Uh, to come and besides that and obviously outside football um, family and uh, business and also my, with my foundation just want to grow the foundation and continue to help youngsters so uh, we want to also with my foundation help the communities disadvantaged areas uh, where we come from give others an opportunity as well to to be seen and also just to try and help assist uh, to obviously those who don't have through the Mabuhani, uh, my, my, through my foundation, the Jackson Mabuhani Foundation, uh, just uh, help out, you know, especially right now in this pandemic, 
you know, people are going to bed without food and um, we've been already been able to do that and contribute. June 16, we had an event to um, contributed some food parcels to, you know, the poor of the poorest in here in Bloemfontein. So we, 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 we make sure that we, we go wherever we go, wherever I am and wherever we, we can help, however we can help with my foundation. That's what we do. So those are the plans and we are hoping to obviously keep growing the foundation and keep assisting as many people as we can. So, so let's, and, and just sticking with your foundation, um, um, is it, is it what, what, what do you guys uh, specialize in? Is it, is it things like um, giving back to the community as in food parcels? Is it, do you guys run um, sports events? How do you guys structure what you do? And I think secondly, how can, how can we help you? So how can me and the people that, that, that do eventually watch this, how can they help you um, achieve what you would like to do? So, so the Jackson Mabokwani Foundation has got two annual events. Uh, one is the winter drive that we do um, every year around June. Uh, that's where we go to uh, schools around the communities, around the country, where we donate to the needy and we give them school shoes and school jerseys. As you know, around uh, June is winter in South Africa. So we have that winter drive and we go to orphanage homes and we donate food parcels and we, we, we give them, we donate as well uh, blankets. And um, and yeah, so basically that's the one event that we'd have. And then the other event that we have is in December, we have a soccer tournament. Uh, it's called the Jackson Mabohane Soccer Tournament. Uh, so uh, it's normally around December, played for a week or two weeks. And uh, so basically that's what we do. We have those two events uh, in a year, but uh, we definitely do uh, support a hell lot of other things. Uh, you know, right now we also uh, voicing, um, you know, our, our plea to the country, you know, to say no against gender-based violence, you know, and, uh, you know, so for, for us, it's, it's all about making change and helping uh, the community. So but the soccer tournaments uh, basically is to assist, give others, uh, youngsters a chance, an opportunity to be seen uh, so that they can be selected to go to development uh, structures like I've been fortunate to. And so we invite uh, the scouts to come so they can select the youngsters and obviously get them into the youth developments of all these other clubs, School of Excellence, Kaiser Chiefs, Pirates and all of them. And uh, so that's what we do in giving opportunities with the soccer tournament. And then obviously with the uh, winter drive, it's about giving back to, to our people, just trying to help those in need uh, in our communities, just trying to fight poverty in our country. And uh, so, yeah, of course, basically what we, um, that's who we are and we are available on uh, all social media platforms. And we would like to urge, um, you know, business people and corporates to come on board and join us uh, because uh, for the past seven years, you know, we've been doing this and it's, it's growing, it keeps growing and we are just blessed. We're happy to have those that have been able to put in a helping hand and people to, to come and, uh, and, and help us uh, make change in our country, uh, you know, communities and uh, so we are available on all social medias uh, Jackson Mabuhwane Foundation on Facebook and uh, on Instagram uh, Jackson Mabuhwane Foundation and uh, on Twitter is uh, JM Foundation uh, and uh, yeah you're also on LinkedIn Jackson Mabuhwane Foundation so and you can also email us uh, that's our website and you can email us on info at jackson okay. um, but i think yeah thank you jackson i think um i've thoroughly enjoyed um, your story i it's actually there's a lot to your story i i thought i i knew a bit about it but there's a lot more to your story than than, than people catch on uh, i think for me maybe maybe just uh just for like a, a minute or so, just parting words to, to the youth and, and people coming up and looking at you and saying, I, wanna, I one day want to achieve what Jackson has. And 
Or what would you say to someone like that? Uh, yeah, what I can say is that, um, you know, life is a gift, uh, a gift from God, and um, you need to um, make sure that you do something with your, with your gift that you've been given and uh, protect it. Don't let anyone uh, disturb your goal. Uh, if you have goals in life and you know what you want to achieve, work hard and make sure that you plan your life uh, so that you can be able to achieve your goals. And uh, it's not easy. It's not simple. We, we, we struggle, but every day you need to wake up with that attitude of saying, I'm never going to give up. So don't give up. Keep working hard. It hasn't been an easy journey for myself and I still believe I'm not even halfway. So let's keep hustling, let's keep working hard and uh, the sky's the limit. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jackson. I think we, we, are, we are going to uh, pledge ourselves. We're gonna, we're gonna pledge something towards your, as Foodie Unpack, we'll pledge something towards your foundation. Uh, maybe we'll buy the corner flags for the tournament in December. Hopefully in December Thank we you. can get some balls. Uh, so we'll just stay, we'll, we'll stay into, we'll be in contact with you, we'll let you know. Um, but we'll definitely say so. something and we'll urge everyone else that, that watches um, to pledge to pledge um, whatever they can. Um, but thank you very much for joining us. I mean, I've thoroughly enjoyed um, the, the chat. Um, and, and just keep well in these times. Have you guys gone back to work yet? Yeah, I know. We've started training as of yesterday. So, yeah, a lot of running. <laughs> hopefully hopefully we see you guys yeah. on the pitch very soon man but uh, until then please just stay safe uh, keep yourself family safe um, these are very tricky tricky times so please just stay safe we, we want to see you on the pitch and, and, and not in the hospital absolutely no, thank you. thanks a lot and thanks for having me my brother keep well as well awesome thanks Jackson